betterness. That's right. You guys prepare like we prepare. You get better every time. <laughs> and I've gotten better with this microphone thing. So we all, by the time I win a championship, PFL will be the number one organization and I'll be a world champion and the number one guy in the league. Thanks for noticing. Yeah, oh, of course. I'm always about the hard work and the, and the people in the group. All right. Um, Anik, please start us off. Bubba, Anik Subramanian, Fightbook MMA. First of all, congrats on a great victory last fight. Um, question for you. When you win the belt at featherweight this year, would you ever entertain moving up to lightweight to try and become a double champ? Um, yeah, I absolutely entertain that. I'm not sure that PFL has that type of system. You know, we work on, you know, a tournament like style system. Um, so we're all kind of in that tournament and we compete at different times. The, the, the weight classes, you know, some, you know, the 155ers and the 145ers don't usually fight on the same night. So, you know, it'll be a little bit difficult or a little bit different to try to map that out. But no, it's something I'd definitely be interested in. Um, not for any other than not for anything other than history and um legacy. Um, not not to say I can be uh, you know, the Canadian guy. I, I, Olivier, I, I I mess up on his name all the time, um, but he's an awesome guy. He's an awesome champion, and they got a lot of good fighters at 155. I would only do it just to make history and 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 just to be in that upper echelon of fighters. Awesome, and Bubba, this is uh, another playoffs for you. Is there anything different you did in training compared to last year? And any tweaks going into this playoffs being your third fight in about four months? I would say that I came back quicker. Um, last year, you know, I probably took one or two more days off in my in my in between practices and in between trainings. I would say this year I probably trained a little bit more. I never lost my abs, never lost um, sight of the championship. You know, it's been 249 days since I took that loss to Lochnane. And, you know, I'm truly, truly after that correction um you know it's sad it's a little bittersweet that he's not here um you know to to for me to get that look back because i definitely want to beat the man to beat me to win the championship to be the man you got to beat the man right um but you know i'm i'm very happy with where i am i'm very happy being the number one seed i would have been the number one seed regardless of of the knockout that um Pinedo had and i'm just going to go in and, and show why men lie number when men lie men lie women lie numbers don't damn that was terrible awesome champ best of luck and excited to see you compete thank you uh patrick hey bubba this is pat mccord from combat sports k how you doing today i'm very well what's up not much man uh talk to me about the last fight you ran through some binjo you were meant to have that fight a year and a half ago how good did it feel to finally have that fight and put that to bed no, it was really good. Um, you know, like you said, I've been preparing for Sung Bin Joe. I've actually had two camps for Sung Bin Joe. Um, the last time he got um the last time we were supposed to fight, he got injured like seven, seven, eight days, like a week out, something like that, something very short. Um, and I had to uh, switch up and fight Kyle Boshiak. So the whole entire camp was all predicated to one, you know, Sung Bin Joe, and then we switched it up. So um, it was good to get the victory. It was good to finally, uh, you know, have that man on my plate and then finally get to eat the plate, even though I've been, you know, looking at it for a long time. Uh, so it was good. Um, and I'm excited that we got out of there very quickly with no uh, no no injuries. And, you know, the toughest part about that was probably the weight cut. But other than that, man, we are we are here to ready to go. And uh, when it comes to this matchup, it's a familiar place, the PFL playoffs. Do you feel that's an advantage that you will have over Jesus Pinedo? Absolutely. I'm playoff Jenkins. The, the only way, and once I get to this point. I'm usually going to the finals and that's just in my life. Um, I made it to the semifinals nationals and different things. And, and usually I win. Um, last year was a, um, an outlier. And at, at this level, when you compete for so long, you eventually run into those outliers of, you know, things that never happened. You know, Pinedo knocked out Lachnane when it's never happened before. Um, I, I haven't taken, um, I think I'm I'm never taking back to back losses, you know. So when you fight in the game long enough or something like that, like these type of things type tend to happen. And a name you probably never wanted to hear again in Chris Wade. He got in on an alternate spot to the playoffs. 
Do you think there's a chance you guys meet in the final? Oh, I wanted to hear that name again. Trust me. Don't don't get it twisted. I wanted that. I wanted Karen Hunt back to make it through Braga. I'm not sure if Karen's going to win against Braga, the alternate who wasn't supposed to be here because Sung Bin Joe allowed him in. But um, yeah, I think Braga is going to be the person I fight. But if 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 Karen can can get past Braga, I'm going to I'm going to destroy him. For 15 minutes, for, I mean, for 25 minutes, there will be a period of time in there where you guys will see my dislike for Karen. And let me just ask now, what what's the meaning behind the nickname in Karen? Do you know who a Karen is in America? Yes, Do you know of course. Who? Yeah. Okay, well, what does Karen normally do when we name her Karen? She's tattletelling. She's speaking on this, speaking on that. And I mind her been a, she's a Karen, right? Everybody knows he's annoying little Karen. Chris, he cries about this. He bitches about that. It's inappropriate to do this. You can't do that. I heard Bubba didn't make weight. I want to see the film. I want to, you know, you know, he's just always bitching and crying about something. Well, I don't like these guys. I don't think you're supposed to like these shut your bitch ass up bro like i don't know what he thought we were going to do when we got in a fight last year but he's complaining about the grabbing of the gloves complaining about an eye poke complaining about a need to this stir bro it's a fight uh, uh, this is the professional fight leagues this is not badminton this is not tic-tac-toe i'm gonna if i get you in the elevator i'm gonna slap the shit out you say something wrong to me i'm a fighter i don't know what you are but I'm a real fighter. I'm a real warrior. You can't just act like these emotions don't exist. I will slap the shit out you. You put my name in your mouth. And uh, last one for me, how would winning the million dollars change your life? Uh, it would make me established. You know, there's things that I want to do as a brand, as a, as a businessman, as a father, um, it would make me established. There's some people in my circle that I truly, truly need to, to revive with financially. You know, they're, they've been there with their heart and their tears and their efforts. And there are so many people in my circle that just need a little, little, little breathing room to be who they're supposed to be. And I keep people like that around me because I know that we can get to those places where they can just get that missing piece. I can inspire them to get that missing moment. And once they reach that moment, they can go off to be who they're supposed to be. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for all anyone and everyone striving to be who they're supposed to be love the energy man good luck thank you boss appreciate it uh jay christian man i didn't think it would be tall hard enough to basically get past what impa kasangane done for this presser but man bubba you really lit up the room with that one <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I tend to do that when I come in the room. I got a light inside me. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. And that dog inside of you. But still, though, <laughs> Focus Fights Audio, J. Christian Gary, just wanted to ask a couple of questions while not laughing my rear end off too much. <laughs> but still, though, you basically are saying how much you want to beat up on Chris Wade, the Long Island killer. But let's not look past the fact that you got the big hermano El Mudo, Jesus Pinedo, coming up this weekend. Have you done any tape searching? Have you done any tape studying to this man? No, I didn't do any studying. I was there. Um, I've been there for his last two fights. I didn't need to study him. I was in the building when he lost to Braga, even though I thought he beat him. I was in the mm -hmm. building when he need a uh, lock name. He's a warrior and he's a fighter. Um, he's got some some type of uh, Peruvian, um, Spanish uh, machis machismo that drives him. That's what he's inspired by. He's a he's a real fighter. He's a real warrior. With that being said, I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. I'm gonna beat the brakes out of him. He's not smart enough to deal with a man like me. He's not experienced enough um, in the craft of just grinding it out. He'd not been in the PFL long enough. I've had my my every year I put a letter on that belt, and I'm almost damn near close to writing my whole name out. And this year, as I am the number one seed, I will prove why I am that, and I will run through not only Pinedo but the competition. 
I see. I mean, we can quote you on that, can't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Everything I'm saying is quotable. Everything I tweet is tweetable. Everything I speak is respeakable. Indeed. Now, about the other side of the bracket, ignoring Chris Wade for a bit, would you mm -hmm. basically say that the fight, that a fight between you and Gabriel Alves Braga be the more interesting fight of the two? Let's just say if Braga runs through Wade. Um, I don't, I don't think it being, I think the best fight for PFL, for TV, for everyone, for my finances, <laughs> for everything would be, it would be Karen, but, um, Braga, man, I, I got so much respect for Braga and his family. I love the combination of him and his father, you know, me having sons, me being the father that I am. When I see a father son duo in combination, man, I I, I got a I got a serious uh, warm and soft spot in my heart for that. So I'm rooting for Braga all, all the time. So to see him on the opposite side against Karen, it's like, damn, you know, of course. Of course, I want to root for Braga because it's against Karen, but I really need Humpback to to get that job done and 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 come see me. I need I need I need Karen Humpback to be in the finals so that I we can speak about this whole destiny thing that he keeps speaking about. I don't think Destiny texts him at all, but she's gonna have to call me too. Wow. Humpback and the reason why the reason why I don't think Destiny called him honestly this is gonna be the reason why I don't think Destiny called him because I think that's the last time this is the last weight cut this is the last handshake this is the last time I'm gonna have to wait on Wade Wade ain't gonna make it out of this weekend he been in the PFL for a million years we almost didn't bring him back this year this is Wade's last trip let's get our pictures in and shake our hands with Chris Wade and then wear wish him farewell to go fight in some arena league because this is his last trip <laughs> as long as i'm in the pfl he'll never sniff that belt i mean come to think of it if you have it your way he probably fighting the team combat league or something <laughs> if, he, if i had it my way he would live in las vegas and we'd fight every tuesday <laughs> wow but uh, still though one more question and i'm out of it but still though one more question when it comes down to you winning the million dollars Mm -hmm. Obviously, quotes aside, tweets aside, all that stuff aside, what would you hope that the fans get to understand about you than they forgot to understand in Bellator, the RFA, or ACB, or even Brave CF, where you last won a world title? I'm a bad man. That's it. And <laughs> They're going to know that I'm a bad man. <laughs> Damn soon. No. When I win that championship, I'm changing that from damn soon no to what I'm gonna say that night. And I've been preparing this. I've been preparing this speech for two years. This one means more to me than anything. This speech, this quote, this talk. When I get to that championship. And it's only speaking of win because I'm so determined. I'm so focused. I'm so locked in. I'm not overlooking anyone. I'm just looking through people. I'm not jumping over anyone or going around anything. I'm going through it this year. And that's why I say what I say. Dem soon no. Dem soon no. Hmm. And pretty soon they will know. But yes, still, sir. though. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> but no problem. Best of skill, bad man. Yes, sir. Ronald. Hey, how you doing, Bubba? Wonderful. What's up? Good, good. So I'm here with the San Antonio Express News, and I just kind of wanted to ask, so how excited are you to fight in the state of Texas and San Antonio? I'm excited, man. Um, Texas has had a lot of, lot of wonderful history when it comes to sports and just history in general. Um, Texas always does it big. I didn't expect it to be Miami humid out here, but um, it is a beautiful place. The the atmosphere, you can feel the city, you know, is is lively. Everyone's walking around doing something. It's it's a happening town. So I'm excited to see what the crowd uh, end up, you know, as they sit in the stands and get into, get into their position to see what it looks like for the main event. Because I'm walking out and I'm going to bring that energy. And so what type of show are you expecting to put on for the San Antonio Fight Fans? Because there are a lot of people in this area that love fight culture. 
Yeah, I plan on putting on the most exciting show out. I mean, this weekend is my weekend. It's Batman Tings. PFL finally got it right, making me the main event. And I plan on putting a, a cherry on top of that cake. Well, I appreciate you both. All right. Thank you. All right, Madi, last question for us. Bubba, back in the playoffs, what improvements have you seen in your game year over year? Um, my mentality. You know, I've always been strong between the years. Um, last year, I felt like I lost a championship due to a lack of focus. Um, there was a growing strike where I just felt like had I stayed focused, had I stayed locked in, you know, I could have, you know, turned the fight or made it continuously go in my direction um, and things didn't go my way. And I felt like it was a lot to do with the things between my ears, nothing physically, obviously my leg got kicked on and there were some techniques that I could have done differently, but I, I didn't feel like I was out of that fight physically. I felt like I had lost the fight mentally. So that is my focus this year, staying locked in, find one course until success. And that is what focus is to me. Gotcha. And the rivalry between you and Chris Wade is one of the most, if not the most polarizing rivalry in the organized, if the, like the organization has seen to date, uh, if the table is set in the finals, give us a preview of what you expect to happen in that cage. First of all, I gave you all this rivalry and I'm allowing you guys to use the word rivalry because it is one to one. But in my perspective, rivalries come from a uh, an equal matchup. This guy and that guy have very similar backgrounds and a lot of things to make them a rival. It's a give and take. The only reason why I do not feel like I am a rival of Karen Humpback, Wade, well, whatever his name is, is because I don't feel like he is on my level, truly. Like, you know, oh, well, he beat you. Bro, when I tell y'all I was going through the most you could possibly go through as a father, husband, and a man, and quarantine, and then having to fight him literally on three weeks, I, I basically just cut weight. I did not train. I did not practice. I did not strategize. I cut weight to fight weight to make weight. That is the only working out that I did to fight Chris Wade the first time. I was planning on having a great time in Miami. I had all these other things planned and the preparation and the mindset and the focus was so, I, bro, I will never be that, never be that person again. Never show up. I lost that fight before I even got on the plane to come to Miami, to come to Florida. So when we go deep and diving into this rivalry, I understand it's one to one and y'all love it. It's I love it. I I sold it. I've given it to you. He, he ain't selling this fight. I'm selling this fight. I'm selling the fact that he's caring. He's humpback. We did this. We did that. And I'm after his head because I was praying when he gloated in front of me and boasted in front of me. I was praying after I had been defeated with blood coming out of my face with a depression that was deeper than most people can actually understand while my children were being taken from me after always being with them during a fight camp. You don't understand the person that I was going into that fight and for him to do what he did, how he did it, and then gloat in my face about it. I'm going to bully him out of the league. I'm going to bully him online. I'm going to bully him. Karen Humpback has got nothing on me in any type of way, shape, or form. And the only reason why it's a rivalry and the only reason why it's one-on-one -one is because I allowed it to be that way. I pray we see him in the finals and I show you guys the difference between me and Chris Wade. That right there is inspirational to anyone that hears it. Uh, what is the first thing you would buy with the million dollars if and when you win the belt? I've been asking all the fighters this. Uh, I need a hot tub. I need <laughs> I need a I need a crib with a hot tub. Bro. <laughs> like, you know, my weight cuts would go so much easier if I just had, you know, at the end of the day, a nice little glass of wine sitting in the hot tub relaxing. So um, I'm in a nice, beautiful, beautiful high rise penthouse in Vegas. 
But uh, I think I'm going to have to get a house. I think I need a house with a pool in the backyard, my dog, my babies, and a hot tub. So it's going to be upgrade my living situation to having a hot tub so that when I come back to defend the title, the weight cuts are much easier. Bubba, you're one of the best on the mic. Can you hit us with your signature bad man tings before we let you go? Bad man tings all 2023. Appreciate you, Bubba. Thank you, and good luck yes, this Friday. Sir. Thank you, guys. All right, Bubba. Thank you, bad man. Oh, nap time, nap time, nap time.